Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing superstition because it is, as of recording this, April the 13th, 2018, which is a Friday. So it is Friday the 13th. I am Donnie. I am one of your hosts. We also have two other hosts. I'm Grayson. Hello. Superstition. Ooh, spooky. Hi. Welcome back. We have been gone for a while, and it is sad, and we are lazy, but we need the cast hours, so we are back again because we have no other, you know, incentive to do this, actually, because we're sad and depressed people. Here is Omari. Um, excuse you. If my incentive for doing this is that it's fun, and I get to argue with people, and as, you know, Grayson mentioned, I'm Omari, and I'm awesome. Hello, I'm Delaney, and I'm here against my will. Please help me. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer: She is not being held against her will. Yes, this can was completely like optional. Holding me for we, we're not holding her. We're using ropes. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was that was messed up. All right. So, how are we starting this off? Um, I do believe with Friday the Thirteenth. So yeah. Um, origin of Friday the Thirteenth, guys. What's up? What is the origin of Friday the Thirteenth? I'm not. I got it. Aware of it. All right. Let's see. The fear of the fr Friday the 13th seems fairly new, dating back to the late 1800s. Friday has long been considered an unlucky day, according to tr Christian tradition. Jesus died on a Friday, and 13 has a long history as an unlucky number. So, so yep. wow. So a Christian, lot of history. Christ Christianity hitting up every aspect of our lives again. <laughs> yeah, wasn't 13 an unlucky number because of Christianity as well? Like, I, I don't know about that one. I'm not sure. But 13, like, a lot of stuff has to do with religion and everywhere, like, society, culture. It's it's everywhere. It is culture, what, weird enough. I mean, even if you don't say you practice a religion, you practice a religion known as somewhat atheism because no one's fully atheistic because unless you're, you know, insanely, insanely, like, living under a rock. I don't know a better term for that. Yeah. I mean, um, I feel like superstition, in it, like, Religi reli re religious beliefs and superstition kind of go hand in hand because, like, ghosts and spooky stuff. I don't think superstition should be a thing because it's basically saying when I ate that taco pizza, it made me sick. I threw up right after. I never ate another taco pizza again. Sad day. I feel like a taco pizza is a great thing, but after I threw up after eating one, I, I was... Never going to eat one again. That's completely illogical, buddy. Yeah, and but so it's superstition. That's my point. One <laughs> thing goes bad, and then they blame everything on that one day. So what? Jesus died. Big deal. So <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> I don't know. That might be a big deal to someone else. I don't know. Just a couple billion or so. Uh, not, not a big that deal. Big right. Well, whatever. Those are just people. No, I mean, it comes from like the basis of the fear of the unknown, because that's like an inherent fear of humans. So like, I feel that superstitions kind of compensate if you don't know especially like you know thousands of years ago when you know we they didn't have google or any way of like supporting any actual scientific breakthrough of what something is so there's like oh you know uh an umbrella opening in doors it's pretty bad you know we're gonna blame it on the devil all right so another thing superstition is so based on minor details because I don't know. People overreact over things. I mean, 2012. Oh, my gosh. We're going to die because the calendar ended. You do realize we get a new calendar every year in America, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. That was such stupid logic. The world's going to end because the Aztecs stopped making calendars. Okay. Maybe they just got lazy. Like, really? Like, maybe they didn't think the world was going to last that long. That was such stupid logic. I, that just, I despise that. Well, I mean, for their time, they were fairly advanced. And their calendar that they had established was a long-running, accurate version of a calendar, the most advanced of the time, I do believe, and it was very accurate. So being, it was, it was somewhat illogical to believe that the world would end because that calendar ended, but there was a, subs there wasn't, there was a level of ideas that could be seen from the calendar ending. Slight correction coming from the audio men. Uh, it was mine. It's not the Aztecs. All right. Um, the weird thing I think about this is Donnie relates it to a advanced civilization. That's what we are today, and yet we replace our calendars every year, and we haven't had an effective thing yet. 
I mean, we maybe not every year, but you know, it's not like they're gonna have a calendar for infinity. We're gonna have this infinity calendar, because you know, time time might maybe possibly go on without humans. Probably not, because we're the best. <laughs> but ah, yeah, mm-hmm. humanity. Yeah, yeah. Merkham. Um, I think it's weird that such small things make such a difference. I mean, you can't open an umbrella inside, but you can open an umbrella when it's not raining. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's so dumb. Or the the color of a cat's fur determines, like, how it affects your life. Like, what? What? Mm-mm. Racism. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Catsism. <laughs> Catsism. No, Wait, is that against cats? Like, so no. dogs are better? Dogs are not better because cats no. are way I better. Mean, no, dogs, dogs are, are way better. They were even worshipped as gods. Yeah, I mean, my team? Dog, <laughs> dogs, dogs are better. Dogs were are not better. worshipped as gods. Anubis. They're, they're the Anubis. Anubis. They're anti gods. That was not. That was a jackal. No, he's a jackal. That was a jackal. A jackal. Gets her, gets a jackal. A jackal is pretty close to a dog. They're, they're family. But a they're bear not is pretty close to a dog. <laughs> so uh, I don't believe that. I'm pretty close to a dog. I got fur. I got ears, and I got a big fat nose. You know what? <laughs> we are pretty Anubis. close. Anubis. I don't know. Anubis was a jackal. Physical. Anubis. Jackal. Anu- Fenrir. Okay, a fox. Yeah, a fox is. Uh, Fenrir is a wolf, but. Fox, foxes are kind of close to dogs, but they're kind of close to cats too. It's kind of like they had a baby, but I mean, yeah. what are you gonna pick? Like, really? I, I feel like fox is best animal. I'm gonna go with that one, even though this is way off topic. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, no, no, no. we're on the cats here. Oh yeah. 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 A- according to superstition and history, a black cat was thought to contain the s- like the soul and essence of Satan himself. So it meant that Satan was watching you if a black cat crossed your path. Jack was a dog. <laughs> it's a wild. Cat. It's a dog, nevertheless. But Sa- also Satan oh. watching watches me through my cat. I have two of them. <laughs> one of them's black and one of them's no, gray. No, only if they're black. Plus, also it also originates from like old witches having like animal familiars, and cats were you know a common. And yet symbol. we, s- you know, spirit animals are still a common idea. It's not like we should fear people's spirit animals. But I'm gonna fear cats. Trump's spirit animal because <laughs> I am not white. So I have to fear the spirit animal of Trump, which is probably a dolphin. I feel no. I feel like no, Trump. I feel like, I feel like Trump's spirit animal is Swiper the fox. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. Uh. I feel like it's a seagull, like a sea chicken. <laughs> sea chicken. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. 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 All right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, side track. Oh, also, Grayson the dog is a jackal. I mean, a jackal's a dog. Okay, we can stop this now. We, we, we need to talk it. about superstition. You're right, okay. <laughs> superstition, thank you, you know? thank you. I just like to be right. <laughs> now, ladders. I walk under ladders on the daily. I try to. My door weighs a ladder. I wish. I wish. That'd be great. <laughs> Bad luck does not exist. Why would it? Luck does not exist. It it shouldn't. I mean, it, there is a reasonable explanation for everything because you we're working with, like, probabilities here, but probabilities are never perfect unless you know everything in the universe like that. I mean, you have to know everything to make sure because if I'm shooting a bow and arrow, right, and let's say the wind's going this way or that way, it shouldn't, it might change things, but what else could change things? You know, maybe someone throws a rock and it hits my arrow. Maybe a meteorite kills us all before the arrow even reaches. You know, maybe China nukes us, those red, those, those commies, maybe they nuke us. Right before my arrow hits that target, you never know. You have to know everything. That's why superstition doesn't exist, because anything could happen at random anyways. It's just randomness. Deal with it. Okay. So I found, uh, you know, through some research, I found one of the reasons why walking on your ladder is considered unlucky. And I feel like this is, I don't know, whoever found this, this might be a bit of a stretch, but let's just see where it goes, right? So, you know the Holy Trinity, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they say, like, a ladder standing up <laughs> oh is like God. a triangle. <laughs> and they say, when you walk under a ladder, it's seen as breaking the Trinity, so it's unlucky. Breaking the Holy yeah. Trinity. <laughs> it's also a holy Egyptian symbol, because the thought was that if one walked under a ladder, they would break the symbol and anger the gods, or God. You know? Okay, hold up. So the, the Holy Trinity we're talking about, right? It's Santa, Jesus, and Satan, right? <laughs> 100 percent the the unholy trinity reference to episode two check it out sorry on youtube Plugs. right now yeah, right now because it's good Santa Claus is al- both god and Satan. Mm. yeah, yeah at the same also time also with the latter thing 
uh, the fear of walking under a ladder has to do with re- its resemblance to medieval gallows. And prisoners would walk under something of the sort to get hanged. The gallows. That just sounds the terrible. Gallows. The word gallows just has this terrible derogatory nature to it. And gallows. It seems like most superstition, at least from where we are, is just birthed from like constant bad feelings. Like, for example, the gallows example, and also like if you're walking underneath the ladder, somebody's probably up there and they can fall on you or drop a paint bucket or something. And so just the repeated event of those actions are just like, you know what? Maybe I should just never walk under a ladder. So that never happens but to me. That, that's like war is dangerous. War is bad luck. If you go to war, it's bad luck. People die. You do know that? <laughs> yeah, it's, go- it's bad luck to go to war. That's that's bad. It's bad luck to walk out at night in front of someone's gun. <laughs> you know, that. yeah, that's bad luck. That That's totally bad luck. You're putting yourself in dangerous situations and saying that it's – bad luck i mean the cat makes no sense but the ladder thing that makes a lot of sense you you can't trust ladders especially when this thing was probably made they had wooden ladders that probably broke every two seconds so you walking under something like this or doing something putting yourself in danger and calling it bad luck is like saying like i feel for you when you really I have no idea what we're talking it's about. It's like taking a pizza out of the oven and buying it and saying the pizza burnt me. No, you burnt yourself. Or, or, you know, the warnings on, like, the coffee cups that say contents might be hot. And really? people ignore it. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's bad luck to hold a coffee cup, guys. <laughs> I mean, might get burnt. It's irrational fears of, like, a certain object because, let's say, you know, a fan, having a fan on in a room in the night with our doors closed is fine to us, but in Korea, it's considered an omen of death. Ooh. They probably have metal fans. I mean, I'd be scared of a metal fan. (laughs) (laughs) No, but, like, only if it's, like, running on while you're sleeping, then you'll die, quote, quote, according to the That's that's some Final Destination stuff right there. It's a fan... (laughs) Final Destination. (laughs) But, yeah, it's a fan death of sorts. Mm. Death. I like death. No, I don't. But... Death's great. death, Death is interesting. Death is interesting. Why does... Why does so much bad stuff or stuff we see as bad be associated with death when it doesn't even make sense? Like a cat as Satan. Black cat as Satan. Just because it's black. That's supreme racism. Or not. (laughs) (laughs) Furism. Maybe maybe furism. I mean, calico cats have black in them. Does that mean they're somewhat Satan worshippers? No, solid black. Because... You know, the color black is like death and then witchy in general. I have a black microphone. Does that mean I my my words worship Satan? Play them backwards. I bet they do. I have no, black the skin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, only cats. You are not a cat. Play the tape you backwards. Okay. Play the tape backwards. You'll hear us worship Satan. All right. ACDC records. Throwback. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback to what? You're like two. I am like two. <laughs> but I, but in Japanese years, so it's okay. You're not Japanese. You're not Japanese. I'm Japanese. You're not Japanese. No one can prove it that it's false. Prove to me that you are Japanese. I shouldn't have to. Why should you not? Because I'm yellow. What? No, that's not. That's not. That's not what? I feel like this in is the not Simpsons, on topic. white people are yellow. No. Yeah, white people are yellow, and Japanese people are tan. What? I, I, you watch The Simpsons? Yeah, and you said that you. And you said that you. Okay, were so my skin color doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, so now you're dropping your own statement because I've proven yeah, to be false. Yeah, yeah they, they happen to be false. It's fine. I can <laughs> drop my own statements. The sky's not blue either. Okay. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Prove it. Prove that it isn't. I don't, I don't have to. Okay, we're way off topic. <laughs> yeah. We are way off topic. But that's a good way to debate because you, you can prove someone false or prove yourself true. They're both very difficult. That is a true statement. Thank so, you, Donnie. <laughs> yes, I, I am back. I never <laughs> left. He I went to the closet. Welcome back. No, I, I've just been sitting here. But from my little bits of research, it seems like a lot of these superstitions come from religious ties, like 666, sign oh of the God. Satan. But it also seems like ways of being able to explain the unexpected, or not unexpected, but unexplainable at the times specifically. Because religion, as a concept at its deepest core, is to define the things that humans have a hard time understanding, like death, what happens after death. Yeah, no one really knows. So religion is there to implement ways of understanding that. And it seems like a lot of these stu- superstitions come in at the same 
come in similar ways being related to um, religious ties, like the black cat being a sign of Satan or 666, just an ordinary number that represents the sign of the devil. It's just kind of interesting. But why, though? Why does it represent the devil? Also, what's wrong with Burger King foot lettuce? I mean, it might be a little <laughs> superstitious, but there's there's really nothing wrong with it. It's just foot For lettuce. For those who don't know, I need you to explain Burger King foot lettuce. Number Bur- 15. Number 15. Burger King foot lettuce. If they're lettuce. listening to this podcast, they better know. Grayson, exactly. explain it for the children. It's for the Coke drinkers. Now, next. <laughs> <laughs> next you mean the Pepsi drinkers? No. Yeah. Right. All right. Ew, no, what? No, Burger King foot lettuce is, if, you, if you're drinking Coke, you understand me. Got you, got you. Yeah. The God juice. But what yeah. if we don't drink Sweet, Coke? sweet God juice. If you don't drink it, Satan worshiper. Oh. Red, you commie. Get out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Please don't. You sound leave. like Caleb now. <laughs> no, she can't. She can't get out anyway. She's st- still tied down. Now, oh, no. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, what is the significance of six, six, six? Play it backwards. It says the same thing. Yeah, it's a superstition that harks back to the Bible, religious. Mm. In the Book of Revelation, six, 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 six is given as the number of the beast, and is often interpreted as the mark of Satan in the sign of the end times. Sign of end times. Like so, apocalyptic. Oh, apop- apocalyptic. So if I went and made, you know, like crop circles, but instead they were crop six, six, sixes. Like if I just put them around like fields, like I, I got like a team of like a hundred people. probably summon a beast from hell. Yeah, yeah. But if I got like a hundred people, we all did it across America. A hundred people, two for each state. Each state, we make crop circles. Do you think America would freak out? End times. Yes, <laughs> they would definitely freak out. I mean, I feel like, I feel like the fear of the superstition in that case would make it true. Because like the like if you were to do something like that, right? They would fear that so much it would like cast America into anarchy, thus bringing the end times. So it's kind of a Cartesian circle. Although like whether or not it's true or not, the fear of the superstition makes the superstition true. Got it. So like if I made my if I gave myself a name, and I made the world fear me because I could write people's names in these books, and they would just die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that one kind kind of sounds that's familiar. A, that's, that's <laughs> Is that familiar? Not yeah, really. I'll make a name for myself. Know. You know, it it'll be, be Japanese, but it'll actually translate to something else. And then I don't know. Japanese anime, Death Note. Uh, Did you just be. copyright our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Sad day. Sad day. <coughs> oh, Omari's dead. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No <laughs> copyright issues. No controversy. <gasps> nobody. No nothing. Because if we ever get reported, we're too small to die anyways. <laughs> you scared me there. <laughs> oh, I am yeah. deceased. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Back on track. 666. Crop circles. Anarchy. Anarchy. Well, we just we're just going to start words now. I get I can say a bunch of words too. Is but lettuce. Cabbage. I wasn't just saying words. Rihanna's a cabbage. <laughs> Number I was, 15. I was saying relative words. You're not you saying random words. I don't know random words. Okay. Okay, we are really really okay. out of it today. <laughs> Grace has been keeping me off task. More super It's like biology class all over again. Hmm. Mm. More superstitions? What's some maybe, more superstitions? Maybe because today I is Friday the 13th. Name it some. was a bad day. Okay, before. well, is yeah. it a superstition of someone, you know, accidentally swallowing a mic- microphone? Is that a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, you know, Amari just did it. It depends on the person. You can hear it inside person. his stomach right now. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> no, it, we it are not The microphone is dying. <laughs> if it's Amari, then it's great. Oh. I'm kidding. Oh for gosh. now. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, the concept of superstitions. Wait, what happens if a Jewish marriage? If they have a Jewish marriage. It is Jewish marriage where they step on the jar, right? Yeah, glass thing. Oh. Glass thing. Whatever. Let's just step on glass people. Now, if they step, if they don't step on it, is it a bad thing? Yeah. Hmm. It not- rains on your wedding day. Is it a bad thing? I mean, why can't your husband see your dress? No, because that's a that's a good it's one. It's a sign of death. But wait, like, wait, but you look the husband f- seeing the wife's dress is a sign of death. Like, but yeah. but boy, you but you look you fine AF. Like, yeah, for real. I just, just want to peek, please. Let me sneak a peek. You looking oh, wait, good, oh. girl, in that exactly. white dress. You got that head exactly. dress. You looking good, girl. What do you mean? I'm wearing like Packers colors to my wedding. Come <laughs> <laughs> on. Uh, uh, invite me to your wedding. I want to see that train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> train wreck, yeah. But okay. I won't tell her. <laughs> 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 oh my god. It's a, ah. it's, it's a superstitious babe. It's bad luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you already a ginger. Wait, that's another superstition. Grayson's a ginger. 
So basically, he should be a devil child. I am a Japanese no... ginger. That makes me ulti- ultimate devil child. But I don't think there's anything wrong with me. I'm just slightly mental. <laughs> but, I mean, no more mental than I am, and I'm not ginger. Yeah, but you're not, I don't know, <laughs> normal. I am not normal. One out of every thousand normal people is probably someone not normal. We have a few of them in this room. We have all of them in this room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I pretty mean, great. It's pretty difficult to define what normal actually is because it's just the average. But when you're looking at humans holistically, you can't really create an average from them because of how different and diverse they are. It just it doesn't work. Yeah, like what if my eyes were purple? Well, I'd be one in seven billion, man. Well, unless if someone else had purple No, there's eyes. no way someone else is having amethyst purple eyes, dude. That would be amazing. And, like, actual cool-looking hair. But instead, I, I look like I got my hair cut by a four-year-old, which I did. But, like... Hmm. Grayson, I have a question. Hmm. Let's, let's prove some superstitions right now. Hmm. So you're a ginger. How has your life as a supposed Satan child been? <laughs> have, you, have you done anything Satan child-like? Satan you childlike, I do not do anything Satan childlike that I know of, except I do talk to myself. Okay. Oh, one of, one of my friends explained this very well. You're not crazy if you talk to yourself. You're only crazy if yourself responds. I do respond. <laughs> well, we <you> respond. <laughs> <laughs> you might be crazy. That's starting to sound like Anthem a little bit. We. We respond. We. Yeah. Because I am not a single individual, but I am a collective being. I like being a collective being. It's fun. I wish. I wish. Being multiple people, though? You yeah. What? What's wrong with being multiple people? That'd be hilarious. I'd have someone to talk to. Well, are you not o- already multiple people when you're here on the podcast versus when you're at home versus when you're yeah, hanging out with your friends? But they don't get to talk to each other. And I don't well, hang out do. with my friends. I don't have friends to hang out with. Well, if you think about it, they do. Because your different personalities would eventually clash, would they not? Mm-mm. My, my personalities are too similar. I keep them very, very, very much the same. And my mom hates it um, because I act the same way everywhere except for here at this podcast because this podcast is my child. I gave birth to this beautiful thing. You know, it was a no, lot of it pain. Wasn't, it wasn't I've given birth you. to it seven times, it eight times about you. now. You only did the descriptions. Yeah, and the descriptions. And th- oh, yeah, by the way, the descriptions, the best part of the podcast, are m- – are done by your Japanese ginger, and it's great. You're not Japanese. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Wait, I have a, okay. So I have a more like down to earth superstition we can kind of discuss. Like saying "bless you" after someone sneezes. Like, uh, like that has a few origin stories. Like I think you example. mean "blesseth." You say "blesseth" Stop after it. someone sneezes. Stop it. Blesseth. Stop it. <laughs> well, like one origin. Blesseth. I know one origin is like so. Like back in the, like the bubonic bla- the bubonic plague days, if they sneezed, they were like. Well, bless you, because I hope you don't have it. And if you do, I hope this blessing, like, protects you from it or whatever. Or there was this one where it's like, when you sneeze, an evil spirit is, like, leaving your body. And so they say bless you to protect everyone else from the evil spirit or something like that. So, like, that's kind of the origin of where it started. But now it's so integrated within our society that evil, even people who, like, proclaim themselves as atheists, if someone sneezes, well, out of, like, an instant reaction, will say bless you. Because now it's considered to be polite. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's not how it started. Political it's correctness. <laughs> I mean, it holds other origins as well. I mean, some people think your heart start stops beating, and the phrase "bless you" is meant to ensure that it will start again, as a form of encouragement. You know, it could be a, just a phrase that was said because people didn't really understand what sneezing was at the time. So wait, like not saying "bless you" kills a man? Because I'll stop saying I'll start saying it less. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, oh. no, but it's like it's so. Mm. Like, that was a superstition born off of what if? Because like even from the origin stories, they thought an evil spirit like. They, they, even, okay, let's say, like, assuming that they, hold up, they assume that they believe that everything that they think is correct, right? Like, for example, let's say that evil spirit leaving the body. Let's say when you sneeze, an evil spirit left your body. When they say blessed you, they said bless you in hopes that it will protect you. So, like, they didn't even know whether or not it would work or not. But yet, they, like, it still was used so much that it became such, like, a staple of society. Like, what? Well, again, going back to the idea that it's created as a way of explaining things that are unknown. They didn't know what sneezing was and why it was caused. So most logical explanation is you're expelling a demon from your body. Done. Bless you. Hopefully you don't get that demon again. What are hiccups? 
Oh, your diaphragm, your diaphragm having a spasm. Yeah, so muscle spasms. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. muscle spasms are normal. No. I mean, it's when air gets caught up in like. Yeah, but then you your body you just spa- spastically. Yeah. yeah, your body's like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's trying spasms. to get the excess air out of you because it's caught. It's and like and people try to soda. stop it. Is that a bad thing? I know it's caught. So like, should we stop it or just hiccup forever? Mostly, you need to expel the air out of you. That's like holding your breath can probably like draw the air out of you. Or I like, I, I like mean, there's air. other like superstitions about getting rid of hiccups, like being scared. Which you know makes you gasp and it's like, <gasps> gets the air out of you. Oh my <laughs> I that mean, makes, that's that actually totally makes a realistic lot of sense. gasp. That that actually makes a lot of sense. See, but that that's yeah. a superstition that makes sense. Yeah. You know what doesn't make sense? Cutting off a freaking rabbit's foot and saying it's good luck. Actually, that does make sense. Oh, I, okay, explain it. Okay, Easter. <laughs> Easter bunny. Easter bunny brings me stuff. If I kill one of his children, he'll bar- We can bargain. <laughs> That's not good luck. That's <laughs> ransom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you are saying child. <laughs> ransom, same thing. Good luck doesn't exist, so ransom is a pretty good example. Take from those who don't need it anymore. Are you Robin, Robin Hood? Hood? Yeah. Robin Hood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what color is Robin Hood's hair? Purple. Probably not ginger. I wish I, I wish I had purple hair and purple eyes. Green like, skin. Having Probably. purple wait, eyes wait, is a are genetic are you defect. Lord Zuck. Wait, I have a wait, I have a question about the superstitions. So nowadays we have hair dye. So if someone was born a ginger but dyed their hair, who would do that? Does the suit stop? <laughs> but like does the superstition still hold up? Who would do that? Red hair is beautiful. People are jealous. Old women want my hair. You know how many old women <laughs> have came up to me and be like, Gimme. You know? <laughs> Same. They Same. want they want my hair dye. But real talk though, like if you dye your hair, are you still considered a ginger? Are you still considered a devil? Well, like, does it, does it, does it, does I, it, I've bleached my hair. Does the superstition nice. no longer hold up? Mm. It's down in your roots, man. <laughs> it's ingrained yeah. inside I you. I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, so Descartes, he has all this logic stuff he applies, or his explanations to why he explained God exists. But they don't hold up in our society. And he, at some point, you got to wonder, is it is it because he didn't have, like, enough skeptics? Like, Religion was way more easily accepted in this time. You know, a lot more people were Christian. It was like a normal thing. Even though a lot of Christians today, there's also a lot more opposition to that. And being that he didn't have a lot of opposition, he didn't have to build up stronger defenses. So now his arguments don't hold up till today. So like, cause this, this, like for example, the ginger superstition could have been developed in a time where hair dye didn't exist. So now the hair dye existing and is very common, does it still hold up? So I, in defense of Descartes, he probably had to say stuff about religion because of the pressures as well he didn't he might not have been a religious man we don't know i honestly don't care but the pressures he he succumbed to the pressures of society which society was filled with christian people who believed who believed that their views were the only right views some people are like that today like those local feminazis men are objects by the way guys men have always been objects Always. We I'm Cleopatra. She object. didn't look like an object. Cleopatra? Mm-hmm. She looks like a mummy. That's true. Mm. Mm. Cleopatra's a queen. Queen, yes. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. No. We're so, topic. what are we going to move on to for the, our next discussion? What else should we move on to? I mean, if we can go back to the rabbit's foot thing, there was kind of a historical explanation for it. It goes back to the wait, hold on. The idea of a rabbit's foot is lucky comes from the pre Celtic tr- is that how you say that word? Celtic, Celtic yes. or Celtic? Celtic. Celtic Celtic tradition of hunter clans rite of passage for their young members. These young males were first introduced to hunting by hunting rabbits. If they were successful, one of the hind feet of the rabbit was pre- presented to them in a ceremony which would welcome them to manhood within the clan. I mean, how masculine. Instead of a ten point buck to mount your wall, you get a bunny foot. Okay, so I think something that should happen is if it's good luck, we should put it in our lucky charms. The rabbit's foot marshmallow. Gore and everything. Doesn't mean you're allowed to put mul- multiple colors on those marshmallows, right? They have multiple colors. We should put, you know, instead of that, the heart, we should put rabbit's foot in blood. Okay. Well, I mean, a weird thing is some stu- superstition is, like, different 
depending on culture. Like Nordic culture, they have um, they have a lot of superstitions based on their enemies, and it's weird because Nordic culture, though, their ideal situation is that they're in combat. Yeah, I mean, even in their afterlife. Like, for example, like, when they're, like, Warriors Nine Matter, whatever they like, like, send them off in this boat, and they burn it, and then, like, their warriors supposedly go to, like, Valhalla, or this other afterlife place, I can't Lord remember. Lord of the Rings, sad day, rip Boromir. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they either go to, like, Valhalla or some other place, I can't remember. And then they, they just, they literally just train and keep fighting in their afterlife to prepare for Ragnarok, which is, like, their version of the apocalypse. So, like, how you were saying, like, they, like, have a lot of battle, like, in their superstitions and so on and so forth. Like, even in their afterlife, they believe their warriors keep fighting. That, that's so weird compared to today because you're allowed to have some cowardice in society today. It's it's acceptable. You accept everything. In Nordic culture, if you were a coward, screw you. You go to the underworld. Our religion says so. So it's it's weird that things that are looked down upon change over time. And now what's looked down upon is being politically incorrect and hurting someone's feelings because they're being a little baby about it. That's very true. <laughs> well. Sadly. You also have to remember the time period and the life of the Nordic people. They would raid and pillage villages on the coast in order to make money, well, to um, gain money, profits, whatever you want to call it, and benefit their people, steal goods, whatever, whatever. So that idea of dying in battle leading to afterlife if you're holding your weapon when you die versus and just going on and living these this glorious life after death to prepare for the apocalypse or ragnarok is based off their culture now our culture is more spread out and more modernized to the point where you have to worry about other people and in a way, pleasing them, even though you shouldn't have to, and it seems ridiculous to have to adjust what you're going to say to other people, but it, there is a sense where it is semi-necessary. I, uh, I like how optimistic Norse mythology is. Like, okay, there's going to be an end of all times. It's called Ragnarok, but they've already predicted the survivors. Like, I don't see Christianity predicting any survivors for the rapture. That's pretty much the end of all time where God chooses yes or no. But Norse mythology, there's going to be survivors, and the the sons of Odin will live on. It's, it's strange. Son of Thor. Son of Thor will live on. I meant. Bad, yeah. Bad, bad and, bad. I mean, yeah, that's cool, but... As you bring up like the multiple different religions, it also seems like all of these superstitions seem to be birthed from some sort of religion. So it almost seems like if religion didn't exist, superstition wouldn't exist. Because I mean, most day, I mean today, most superstitions have devolved from their more religious meaning, but they're still their origin. So like, would they still exist without religion? That's weird because religion's based upon hope, and how how does something based upon this hope of this not being the end, give birth to something that's seen as either bad or anti, you know, your belief. Maybe it's the outlet for the fear or the outlet for the doubt. So they need, they have the doubt. And so instead of looking inside themselves for better answers, they blame this doubt, this thing on trickery. Yes. And so there's, you know, there's got to be this afterlife um, thing to work upon. Yes. Um, well, just a quick comment on top of that. Um, you have to, there has to be some kind of pain or distraughtness to bring about happiness and hope. It's, many philosophers have discussed this idea before, and it's relevant in, I believe, superstition as well. But I do believe that we are sadly out of time, and we must cut this conversation. Sadly, this short. was a good discussion. <laughs> it was, it was scattered. It was covered, smothered, smothered, something. <laughs> Others, covered. you know, Waffle House, great, great place, not sponsored. Please sponsor us. <laughs> and uh, so for my final comment, I just want to say, <clears throat> it seems like, Donnie, what you wrote up there at the end, the fact that, you know, like there has to be like light and dark is the one thing that religion and science agree on. Because like in science, you know, you have rules such as for every, uh, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. You know, that's basically saying like for 
when there's light or darkness, you know? And I feel like that's, like, one of the few areas where they agree. And I kind of feel like that makes it seem so, like, substantial to, like, our world. Yin-yang. Yin-yang. Now. Eternal balance. Anger on. Anger ong. So it's an important question. Last am- last airbender. Anger ong. Ang. 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 Anyone who says ong, watch the movie, you need to die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, thank you for listening. It was a great podcast. It was kind of quick, kind of short. It doesn't matter. It was good. We had some good discussion. We were way off topic this time because we didn't have a, much of a basis. Nah, but it's because it's Friday the 13th. Oh, it is Friday the 13th, so we are a little off. All right, thank <laughs> you. Um, that was good. It's not full moon, sadly. Friday the 13th, no, no full moon. Full moon's a good superstition, though. Even more superstitious. You know, All right. Well, we'll see you around possibly next week. We hope next week. We're going to be here next week. No promises. But we'll be here next I week. I promise. See ya. Bye. Yay. Adios. <laughs>